So hi guys, my name is Nachiketa and welcome back to another video. This video is gonna be about vector autoregression and if you're new to this channel, I make regularly videos on such topics. So do consider subscribing. Well anyways, this video is gonna be short because this topic is super simple. And vector autoregression, if you have seen my videos of autoregression, they should be very simple to understand. If you have not, I would recommend you watch them, but I'll still give you a gist of that. So let's look at this. Vector autoregression is just a slight modification of the autoregression model. Now let's look at what the autoregression model used to do. It used to calculate the future values of a variable based on its previous time lags. Right? So I've written equation in words because it's much more easier to understand. So this is what autoregression is, right? So say you want to predict the uh, current value of a variable, say the car price today. Right. If it is used to, if it is, if it has to be fit by an auto regression model, the equation would look something like this, which is the car price today is going to be equal to some constant into the car price yesterday, plus some constant into the car price day before yesterday, plus some error, which you're going to make. So this is basically an auto regression of the second order because the current value of the car price is dependent on the value in the past two time periods. Right, so this time period could be say the last month, it could even be the last year or just last day. Right, so just the equation, the mathematical symbols would look like this y of sub t is equal to constant c1 into y of sub t minus 1 plus c2 into y of sub t minus 2 plus some error in the current time period. Vector autoregression is very similar. What it does is it calculates the future values based on its own previous time lags plus the previous time lags of some other variable. So what happens is your car price today can be dependent on other factors as well, right? It could be say dependent on the cost of public transport. So as the cost of public transport increases, people would tend to buy cars. And as a result, because of the increased demand, cars prices could also increase. So these are two variables which are related to each other. So one can be used to make a better prediction for the other, right? So basically, where vector order regression uses a related variable which is also called as an exogenous variable so a variable which is out of the current system so in this case say there's a variable for public transport cost so as the public transport cost is increasing car price also goes up because more people are trying to buy cars right so now if you have the data of all the public transport cost you can use that to make a better prediction of car prices so let's represent public transport price by X. And now your vector autoregression model would look something like this, right? It's the same as autoregression. Just instead of using the value from the previous time period, you're also including the value of the other variables previous time period. So since you're only using the value in the previous time period, this is a vector autoregression of order one. It can be extended to any order you want, right? So the equation is pretty simple. Y T is dependent upon y sub t of minus 1 plus the x sub t of minus 1 plus some error. Similarly, x t is equal to some constant into its own previous value and the value of y in its previous time period. I hope this is pretty simple. Just another thing to learn in this is the matrix representation, which is also very easy. Just these two equations are represented in the form of a matrix, which looks like this. And if you have learned matrix multiplication, you should be able to see how this is the same, right? So in the case of matrix multiplication, what you simply do is you, you multiply the first row by the first column of the second matrix and you'll get the same equation. You'll get C11 into Y sub T minus one plus C12 into X T of minus one. So when you open this matrix, you're going to get the same equation as before. And if you have multiple variables in this, we have only two related variables. There could be 10 variables which are related to each other. In that case, you will simply have more number of rows. You have Y T X T. Similarly, you can have some variables say Z of T, so on and so forth. Just the number of rows in this matrix is going to increase. So this is the main things that you want to know about the theory of vector order regression. It's very easy to implement this in Python as well. And I'm going to do that in future videos. So if you did like this, do like this video and subscribe to this channel and yeah thank you for watching